What's up, everybody? What a shaking GT Nation. It's me, Glenn Templeton. Again, I want to thank all of you fans for tuning in one more time on the Glenn Templeton Fan Club app. I'm here today to tell you a little bit of a backstory about one of the biggest launch pads in my career ever, and that is when I was hand selected by the family of Conway Twitty. Joni, Kathy, Michael, and Mickey, they all chose me to play the role of Conway in a touring musical. Now, along with that musical, came a whole lot of a backstory and it all started with a hand I was hand selected out of about 20,000 hopefuls in order to be able to play this part and um biggest launch pad I probably ever had in my career other than just making uh the move to Nashville uh a long time ago and um this was a this is something that's everybody really wants to know about but very few people do know the whole backstory um, I was demo recording, uh, singing demo songs for different writers in town, and a guy that we all know by the name of Jared Neiman had written a song that they wanted to pitch to Jeff Bates, and they wanted someone who fe they felt like had somewhat of a Conway kind of esque sound. So they called me up and asked me if I would demo the song for them, and I demoed it. And little did I know, but the guy who was going to sing the backgrounds on the song was a guy by the name of John Wesley Riles, who you've heard on many, many millions of selling records, like from Alan Jackson to Kenny Chesney. He's been on everything. He came in to sing the backgrounds on this little demo song that we're going to pitch to Jeff Bates. And he led on to me uh, that we were gonna, that they were gonna be putting together this Conway Twitty musical and that I had such a Conway sound. Would I be interested in auditioning for the role? And later found out that his connection was that he was married to Joni Twitty, which is Conway's daughter. So, obviously, for an old boy like me who grew up on 12 wheels in a little town right outside of Tuscaloosa, Alabama, I felt like, man, what a great opportunity for me to have my name and Conway Twitty's name associated with one another. Well, yeah, I'd love to audition for it. So they set up an audition for me. I went down and auditioned for the role. And I think out of about 20,000 hopefuls from what I understood, they called it Glenn Templeton. Said, you've been chosen for the role of Conway Twitty in this upcoming touring musical. Uh, in which one I am still so grateful for because uh, it's been a huge launch pad and platform for my career. Um, a little bit of the backstory behind that is you never know really uh, why they chose you. There's a lot of guys out there who sing great, a lot of artists who sing really, really great and sing really close to Conway. But you never really know why they chose you. And so we had what they call a dress rehearsal uh, at Twitty City, and during this dress rehearsal, I was standing backstage, and I had been questioning myself time and time and time again, why me, why me? And so I was kind of having a little conversation maybe with Conway backstage at our first dress rehearsal, and I was thinking, well, why me? And we had about half of our wardrobe ready, and I, did, I still just didn't know if I was the right one for the part or not, because I'm an aspiring artist trying to write and record and play my own music. But this came across just, and you have to seize every opportunity in this industry. So when I was asking myself, is this gonna be the right thing for me? They uh, have brought out a whole wardrobe of Conway's clothes and uh, his like, the stuff that he wore, the stuff that he wowed so many uh, hearts and so many souls with were the clothes that were sitting right in front of me. And no one thought that the clothes were going to fit. They were like, well, you know, maybe he could just try one on. And they brought me this purple or like a, like a, I guess it's a lavender color to the best of my knowledge. Shirt, silk. 100% silk and had like a six inch cuff of solid rhinestones, a cuff of rhinestones on the collar. Um, the, uh, the rhinestone snaps that went through the shirt 
And they said, well, try this one on. All the family was like, ah, oh, he's not going to be a weather. Conway was a like a bigger barrel-chested guy, and Glenn's more of a slender guy. He's just, he's just not going to fit it. And I put that shirt on. And it's kind of like one of those deals where guys who are out there watching – and girls as well. You know when you when you buy your man a jacket and he puts it on, and fellas, when you put that jacket on, you just feel like that it kind of holds you up a little bit straighter. Well, that's the way the shirt felt when I got it on, and I was like, okay, now I understand. I am chosen because against all the odds of everybody thinking that this shirt's not gonna fit, uh, there were just multiple shirts on the on the wardrobe and they happened to pick that one and put it on and man that thing just fit like a glove so anyway dress rehearsal went great there was just one missing link that we had not found yet and that was the hair and have all of you remember conway was known for his big wig and they took a notion upon themselves to fly me to Los Angeles to have these wigs made. And this was a big deal to have hair like Conway. And it was kind of dreadful. I was kind of dreading it going, man, I just don't know if I can do a fro. Um, and my hair was about like this. This was, you know, quite some time before the official bandana came along. But my hair was about this length and they flew me out to L.A. And where they make professional wigs for movies. And I sat down in the chair. And this lady comes out, typical L.A. fashion. Comes out and she looked a little bit confused, a little bit puzzled. So you won't make me to make this guy look like this photo of Conway Twitty. So you want me to make him look like that? Why? Well, after two or three hours of sitting in the chair and them taking measurements and this was one of the wigs that we came out with. That was back in the day. That was one of the suits. And about a year ago, we had three wig changes. This was which one? That was one wig change. Then the rock and roll era. Then we had two more wigs that about last year, we were informed that my name had been put in the Country Music Hall of Fame. And so I was so excited. I was like, oh my God, for what? What for? What for? And they said, well, we saw where Glenn Templeton wore these wigs as Conway Twitty in the touring musical. And there you go, folks. There's my name in the Hall of Fame right there because I wore those two wigs. You know what? You just got to get in where you can fit in. Anyway, I thought I'd share with y'all that little bit of backstory. There's more stories to come. I got more stories from the road, stories from the bus. You guys keep tuning in, and uh, I'll keep giving you more information. Thanks so much. God bless y'all. I appreciate it.